Okay, so let's move on from the drums and focus now on the synth section. We have quite a few to mix, so it's important that we get the levels correct fairly early on. We have talked about gain correction and made some changes to roughly get the sound as even as possible, but as we progress, we will adjust the levels even more accurately. But first, let's group solo these sections along with the drum section and see how they work together. Remember that we put these into bus tracks so we can also adjust the overall level. Let's take a brief listen to the two groups playing together now. Right from the start, I can hear that the main lead synth is a little bassy and may need some attention, with some EQ just to allow it to cut through the rest of the mix. And seeing as this is supposed to be the main lead riff, we need it to have some dominance. And also, the chorus data is a little loud, and we'll need the levels looking at. But let's focus on the main lead for the moment. We want to make some adjustments to the EQ to allow the lead riff to cut through the song and stand out and tell people that this is the main melody. So as with our rhythm, we want to add the analyst into the track. And with this track soloed, let's see where this riff sits. Now from the graph, we can see that there isn't much presence in the higher end, towards 10k, and boosting here will up the transient level and help to push through the song. Remember, the analyst isn't there just to tell you where an instrument's frequencies are, it also tells you where its presence isn't so strong. And with this info, you can manipulate these frequencies specifically to get the desired result you're after. So with this information, we can see that the reason this riff seems bassy is because it has little presence in the top end. And we need to adjust the EQ to compensate for this absence. So let's head over to the Pro Channel EQ and make these adjustments. First, we will pull the high pass filter in and knock off anything below 80 Hz, and now with a slope to really trim this down. High and low pass filters are the perfect method to get rid of large areas of frequencies at once that are either not in use or not wanted. Now we need to boost our top end, so in the high end band, we will set our frequency to around 11k. Trim the Q to around 5 or so, and give a good amount of boost to 15 dB or so to really accentuate this frequency. We also want to smooth out this riff, and a little compression will give us this. So we will add one of my personal favourite compressors, the PC4K S-Type Bus Compressor. Now generally, this is designed to be used on bus tracks, but I have found that it works wonderfully well pretty much anywhere. So with this added, we will dial in some settings. We want it to be very subtle, so we will set the threshold to around minus 12 to 13. An attack of around 1 and a release of around 0.5. Let's take a quick listen of a before and after. For a bass line, we have two tracks that hold this job, the synth bass and the chorus Zeta. On a side note, tracks that have Zeta in the name were recorded on the Zeta synth that comes with Sonar. We will work on the chorus Zeta first, as this is the first one to enter the song. First off, we will knock off around minus 3 or so dB of gain in advance. This can always be altered later on if needs be, but it allows us to add effects without having to worry about too much clipping. Now EQing is really the theme of the day, and we start, as usual, by finding out its frequency range. So again, we will add the analyst into the track. And see whereabouts it sits. Let's have a listen. Well, as expected, we have a lot of presence in the bottom end, but I also noticed a slight rise in the 5.1k region, and it's this that we need to calm down a little, and steer this track away from the area, as we have other tracks that are using up high end. So inside our pro channel, we will add some EQ to deal with these issues. 
First, let's add a low pass filter to deal with the high end. We will roll off anything beyond 5K and narrow the slope. We will also add a slight high pass filter to remove any unwanted hum or buzz that you can sometimes get from a low end instrument. We will roll off anything below 40 Hz also with a slightly narrowed slope. Now to find the right frequency to boost in order to obtain a nice rounded sound, we will trust to an artist's taste rather than purely relying on the analyst to do all the hard work. So we will go over to our low mid band and set a frequency of around 300 Hz. A fairly wide Q of around 2. And boost to around 12 dB. We will play the track, and using the frequency knob, we will sweep across the low mid and low bands to see what sounds appear more appealing. We will make any adjustments necessary to the gain or volume. And I think we have found a good sound in the 317Hz region, so we will leave the EQ now as as is and move on. We will start now on the synth bass, and as this is the other track that also uses a bass drone effect, we want the two to sound not the same, but similar enough that the two blend together well enough to make it seem as though the chorus data has evolved into this one. It will just add continuity to the track as a whole, so let's solo the track and have a listen to it dry. I don't think much needs doing in terms of EQ, but we will add a high and low pass filter to clean up any unwanted frequencies that may be there. So in the Pro Channel, we will add a high pass filter and roll off anything below 40 Hz. And a low pass filter and roll off anything past 5K. We will also reduce the gain to around minus 5 dB to let the track breathe a little. Let's take a little time now and solo both the synth and the rhythm and see how they are sounding together and make any further adjustments to the levels. Let's now work on the Zeta 3 track. This track acts as a lead into the chorus and remains throughout the chorus to give the section some definition. So we need to make it quite present for the short time that it has. So let's solo the track and have a listen to it. Ok, so first we will drop the gain to around 5 dB before we begin doing anything too drastic. And we will add the analyst to the track and have a look. Ok, I can see that there isn't much in the way of a high end, and this may make it sound muddy, so we need to sort this out. But we also don't want to take up the frequency space that the main lead is occupying, so we have to be aware of both tracks whilst we mix this one. In the main lead, we boost at around the 11k area, so here we will boost slightly just below at around 10k region. So in the high band, set our frequency to around 10k. A slightly wider Q of around 1.4 to pick up some of the surrounding frequencies and boost around 7 dB.
we had quite a lot of presence in the mid-range and although okay, we want to disassociate it as much as possible from the main lead, so we will attenuate around the high mid section. Set a frequency of around 600Hz, a wide Q of about 1.1 and attenuate around minus 5dB. We will also add a high pass filter and roll off anything below 40Hz. To separate this even more from the main lead and give it some space of its own in the mix, we will slightly pan it to the right to about 40%. Panning is a great and easy way to add space in a mix and give an instrument some clarity in an otherwise busy mix. Sometimes it can be hard to pick out similar sounds when they are placed in the same area of the mix. Let's now have another listen to the synth folder as a whole to get an idea of how it's all coming together and make any fine adjustments to the levels. We come now to the last track in the synth folder, the chorus strings. It has been hard up until now to make them out, so levels do need to be adjusted. But first, to get an idea of how they sound, let's quickly solo them and have a listen. Let's start work to find out where best to place this track. Now just to show you a more earwise method of EQing, we won't use the analyst for this track, but instead rely upon our listening to guide us as to where best to boost and or attenuate. So first we need to decide where, if at all, we want to boost on this track. So to start off with, let's sweep across the high band region and see if we can hear any nice frequencies coming from this area. Let's first set our Q to around 1.7 and boost slightly at 8 dB and have a listen. I think we may have hit upon a sweet spot at around 7k, so we will leave our cue and just set our frequency to this area and boost a little more to around 10dB. Let's also see if the low end needs a little pick me up, so using the same method we will go to our low band and set a cue of 1.3 or so, and boost a little, 5dB should be ok. And we will play the track again and sweep the low band. We found a nice sound in the 200Hz area, so we will set our frequency to this and leave the other perimeters alone for now. We will just add a high pass filter and roll off at around 40 Hz. Ok, so we have now EQ'd all the tracks within the synth folder. Now let's hear what they all sound like along with the rhythm section, always looking and listening for any clipping that may appear.
We will move on now and try out some more creative and adventurous techniques.